Okay, so I'm going to show you a few examples of finding the slant asymptotes for a rational function. Slant asymptotes are just that. They're not vertical and they're not horizontal. They are slanted. Um, they can also be called oblique asymptotes. They occur when the degree of the numerator is 1 greater than the degree of the denominator. Okay, so notice I have degree 3 in the numerator, degree 2 in the denominator. So I know I have a slant asymptote. To find the slant asymptote, you go ahead and you divide the two polynomials, put the top, the numerator inside the division symbol, and the denominator outside. When you're doing this, just to be safe, we always want to put zeros <clears throat> for those terms that are missing. So notice I didn't have an x squared and I didn't have a constant term, I put zero in for those. Um, on the outside, I want to do the same thing. Notice I don't have an x, so I'm going to put a 0x minus 3. And you may not need it, but you always want to just in case, because a lot of times you do. So when we're doing long division, we would say, what do we need to multiply by x squared to make it equal x to the third? Um, and we just need another x, so we multiply <coughs> x times x squared is x to the third. x times 0x is 0x squared. And x times negative 3 is a negative 3x. We subtract here, so we draw a line, change all of your signs, and then you go ahead and x to the third minus x to the third is 0, as we planned, 0x squared, and 2x plus 3x gives me 5x. Bring down the next number. Now, at this point in long division, typically we would say, well, x squared cannot go into 5x because um, it is larger in degree. So this would be our remainder. When you're finding the slant asymptote, you do not include the remainder. You just include the number here. So my slant asymptote is going to be the line y equals x. And if you wanted to put that on the graph, we're not asked to do that here. But if we wanted to put it on the graph, it, we would graph the line y equals x. Um, a graph that goes through 0, 0 and has a slope of 1. So this would be my slant asymptote. Now I would still have to find other parts to graph this, but... All right, here is a second example. So again, we're going to put, we're just going to go ahead and divide these to find our slant asymptote. Again, the numerator goes on the inside of the symbol. The denominator goes on the outside. And then I want to put, excuse me, any terms that are missing, I'm going to put zeros there just in case. So on the outside of x squared plus 0x plus 2. And I look at the first term, x squared. To get x to the third, I would have to multiply by an x. So that's what I do. Um, x times x squared is x to the third. x times 0x is 0x squared. And x times 2 is 2x. We subtract here, so we draw a line, change all of our signs. And we get 2x squared minus 0x is 2x squared minus 2x, and we bring down the negative 1. Can we still divide here? Um, can x squared go into 2x squared? It can. All we need is a 2 out in front. So we're going to multiply by 2. So we put plus 2 and multiply. 2 times x squared is 2x squared. And 2 times 0x is 0x. And 2 times 2 is 4. <clears throat> we want to subtract now. So we draw a line, change each of our signs on the bottom there. We get 0, negative 2x, minus 5. And at this point, again, we need to say, okay, can x squared go into negative 2x? It cannot because it has larger degree. So this would be our remainder down here. But when we're writing slant asymptotes, we don't include the remainder. Our slant asymptote would be the line y equals our answer to our division problem, minus the remainder. y equals x 
plus 2 would be our slant asymptote. Alright, example number 3. <clears throat> so again, write down your polynomial to do your division. If a term is missing, put a 0 in that place just to hold its place. You go ahead and you divide. This time, we have x to the third into negative 2x to the fourth. So what would I have to multiply by? Well, I would need a negative 2 in front, so multiply by negative 2, and I need one more x. Then we multiply. Negative 2x times x to the third is negative 2x to the fourth, just like we want. Negative 2x times negative 3x squared is a positive 6x to the third. Negative 2x times 2x is a negative 4x squared. And negative 2x times negative 1 is a positive 2x. I'm going to subtract. So we draw our line, change all of our signs, and combine. The first terms cancel, as they always should. 3 minus 6 gives me a negative 3x to the third. x. 1x squared minus 4x squared is a negative 3x squared, and 0 minus 2x is a negative 2x. Now we look and say, what do we have to multiply by x to the third? To make it equal negative 3x to the third, well, we just need a negative 3. They're both x to the thirds already. And then we go ahead and multiply. Negative 3 times x to the third is negative 3x to the third. Negative 3 times negative 3x squared is a positive 9x squared. Negative 3 times 2x is negative 6x. <clears throat> and negative 3 times negative 1 is a positive 3. We draw a line and we change our sign. Positive to negative and negative to positive. And then we combine. Now at this point, hopefully you're noticing that we are completed our division because x to the third can't go into an x squared because it's larger in degree. So our slant asymptote is the line y equals our answer up here, negative 2x minus 3. Okay, this is the last example, and this one's a little more complicated than the others. Um, so, let's just get into it. We start exactly the same way, but it takes a strange turn as we start to do our division. Um, this kind of throws people sometimes. We're dividing 5x minus 2 into 2x squared plus 3x minus 1. And when we look at our first terms and we say, what do we have to multiply by 5x to make it equal 2x squared? Well, we can see that we need another x, but to make 5 equal 2 sometimes is a little tougher. What you're going to do is you're going to multiply it by 2 fifths, okay? Because what needs to happen, we need this 5 to cancel. So we're going to put it on the bottom of the fraction. And what we want to end up with, we put on the top. And hopefully as you do this, you'll notice that, in fact, 2 fifths times 5 is 2. So 2 fifths x times 5x is 2x squared, and 2 fifths times negative 2 would be negative 4 fifths x. We draw the line and change all of our signs. The 2x squared cancel, um, then we need to add 3 x plus 4 fifths x, you can change that to a fraction with the denominator 5 by multiplying, or you can use your calculator. And this is the same as 15 fifths x. So as we add those, we get 19 fifths x and bring down the negative 1. Now we have to look and say, okay, what do we have to multiply by negative, or excuse me, by positive 5 x? to make it equal 19x. So again, what you're going to do is we want to, the 5 not to affect our number. 
So we're going to multiply by, so that an extra 5 will cancel, 9 25 I just multiplied by an extra 5 in the bottom there, because what will happen is I'll be able to cancel a 5 out and have 19 fifths down here. I don't need an x because they both have an x. So we multiply, and 19 25 times 5 is 19 fifths x, and 19 times 19 25 times negative 2 is negative 38 25 Draw a line, change our sign. I notice we're down to constant terms here, so we're done with our division, our slant asymptote. We do have a remainder, but slant asymptote doesn't include that. So um, our slant asymptote is the line y equals 2 fifths x plus 19 25 and that is some help with plant asymptotes. Okay, Alex.